Trapped in a loveless marriage, a woman finds forbidden passion with her husband's friend, leading to a desperate fight to keep their illicit affair alive. After her mother's passing, Therese finds herself abandoned by her father in the countryside, under the care of her aunt Madame Rakan and her frail cousin Camille. Despite her father's promise to return, Therese reaches adulthood without ever seeing him again. Having taken care of Camille all these years, Madame considers Therese as her son's guardian angel. With only her aunt and sickly cousin as companions, Therese manages her desires alone. After a lively stroll, though still wanting more, she returns home to the somber news of her father's demise. After a while, Camille shares the news that they'll be relocating to Paris, as he secured a job with the assistance of Inspector Michaud. Despite Madame's reservations, Camille asserts his role as the man of the family and his responsibility to lead. Inspired by his determination, Madame has a change of heart, expressing her own desire to open a small shop once again. Camille mentions that they'll depart after the wedding, prompting Therese to inquire about the couple. To her surprise, Madame lightheartedly says that she's marrying Camille. Therese thinks it's a joke until she's told that she's lucky to have someone like her cousin. Soon the Rakans are in Paris, and Therese is daunted by the bustling city. Despite his mother's optimism, Camille is disappointed at their future home. As Madame tours her son within the house, Therese settles in her new cage. Time passes, and Camille establishes himself at work although he confesses to Therese that he's unhappy in his job. While getting ready for bed, her husband mentions that he finds solace in visiting the zoo and admiring the bears. His wife tries to entice him, pretending to be a bear herself, but Camille shows no interest and goes to sleep, leaving her desires unsatisfied. In the Rakan household, Thursdays are reserved for dominoes, and Camille brings along an old friend, Laurent, who is coincidentally a co-worker. Madame Rakan and Therese welcome them at the door. Delighted to see a familiar face, Madame invites Laurent to stay for dinner and games. During dominoes, Olivier shares his recent visit to the morgue as part of an investigation. Suzanne, his wife, is repulsed by the revelation and excuses herself. Inspector Michaud, Olivier's father, expresses that he would rather infiltrate a den of thieves unarmed than visit the morgue. Laurent, on the other hand, casually mentions that he used to sketch bodies at the morgue in the past. He reveals, however, that he had to give up his painting when his father stopped supporting him. Therese, who isn't accustomed to men, feels unsettled by Laurent's presence and decides to open a window to alleviate her discomfort. Aware of Laurent's past as a painter, the Rakans commission him to do a portrait of Camille, during which his words seduce the frustrated Therese. When she's summoned by Madame, Laurent stops her, insisting that her shadow is part of the painting. Even when he's done for the day, Laurent lingers outside the Rakans' residence, longing for more of Therese. Eventually, the painter finishes the portrait, and Madame has reservations about its blue and gray tones. However, Camille is completely enthralled by the outcome. As the mother and son leave to celebrate, Therese and Laurent celebrate in their own way. The morning after, with her desires satisfied, Therese has new life breathed into her. Madame remarks on her unusual energy, unaware of the illicit affair that now fuels her daughter-in-law's spirit. Through a discreet entrance to the shop, Therese and Laurent continue their illicit rendezvous during lunch, then resuming their day as usual. One Thursday afternoon, Camille, oblivious to the affair, reminds his friend about game night, considering him as part of their family. Later upon seeing her paramour, Therese eagerly greets him, her excitement palpable as she leads him to their marriage bed. Laurent is taken aback by this side of her, realizing that she isn't just a quiet girl confined to the corner. Soon, she reveals just how noisy she can be. That night, they're surprised at Therese's skillful playing, and Grivet remarks that it's always the quiet ones they should be wary of. During one of their secret encounters, Madame summons Therese, and she lies about having a migraine. Laurent compliments his lover's skill at lying and standing, to which she thanks him multiple times. Late at night, Camille abruptly awakens from a disturbing nightmare, recounting a vision of sinking into chilling depths. Surprised at seeing his wife by the window, he suspects her of withholding other secrets from him, and then commands her to get in bed. During one rendezvous, Laurent promises never to leave her, sealing the promise with a kiss. One day after work, Camille insists on taking his friend to the zoo. In the presence of the bears he frequently visits, the sickly man confides and Laurent about his struggles to bring Therese happiness, who offers the simple advice of loving his wife more. That night, despite his frail constitution, Camille tries loving Therese but it ends disappointingly for both of them. The next day, Therese tells Laurent her wish of falling asleep in his arms. Just then, Madame comes up and brings her tea for her migraine. 
so Lorong is forced to hide inside her skirt. As Camille prepares for bed, he announces that they'll be moving back home, saying the pollution has detrimental effects on his health and her migraines. Despite Therese's attempts to dissuade him, her husband asserts that the matter isn't up for discussion. Devastated, Therese seizes the opportunity to visit Lorong under the cover of night while the Rakans are asleep, during which her paramour suggests that it would be easier if Camille were to have an accident, casually mentioning that accidents happen frequently. Unwilling to comment, Therese departs, but not before they affirm their love for one another. On one of the final days of summer, Therese, Camille, and Lorong go on an outing in the woods. When Therese mentions hearing the water nearby, her husband suggests renting a boat and rowing into the sunset, but requests a brief rest before continuing. Camille soon falls asleep, and Lorong finds himself unable to resist temptation, allowing his hands to wander towards Therese. However, they're interrupted when their friends unexpectedly approach. Greetings are exchanged, but the gathering is cut short when Olivier abruptly storms off, frustrated by Suzanne's nagging. As the trio rent a boat, Therese senses the impending events and hesitates to step on board. Doubt lingers in her mind, but when Larong whispers words of love that contrast sharply with Camille's ridicule, Therese finds the strength to push through. Larong takes the oars and rows to a spot concealed by mangroves. Unbeknownst to Camille, his nightmare of sinking into the chilling depths is on the verge of becoming a grim reality. Soon, Larong and Therese return to the docks distraught, with Camille nowhere in sight. They are aided by their friends, to whom Larong recounts the unfortunate incident where Camille's dancing caused the boat to capsize. Their companions also assist in delivering the devastating news to Madame Rakan. Even from a distance, the anguished cries of Camille's mother echo through the air, while Therese quite literally puts on the performance of her life. The authorities conduct a search of the river, while the Rakans go into mourning. Amid this somber period, Lorong shoulders the responsibility of identifying his deceased friend. When he sees Camille's lifeless body, he notices the eerie resemblance to the blue and gray tones of his painting. During the funeral ceremony, as the Grieving Therese seeks solace, Lorong holds her in his embrace and whispers that he has no regrets. That very night, the clandestine lovers find comfort in their forbidden union. The following day, Madame remains overwhelmed by grief and sorrow. Therese approaches, seeking to offer comfort, but her aunt's anguish turns into anger. She blames Therese, accusing her of failing as Camille's guardian angel, holding her responsible for his tragic demise. As Suzanne watches, the matriarch wishes that it had been he who survived instead of Therese. Moments later, she tearfully apologizes, unaware that her blame and resentment is completely justified. During one of their routine game nights, Madame Rakan finds herself dozing off, only to be awakened by Therese's whispers to Laurent. Intrigued by the hushed conversation, Madame demands an explanation as to whom her daughter-in-law so desperately wanted to see, who quickly dismisses it as a mere dream. Then Madame turns her attention to the men, seeking their input on the time it takes for a body to sink to the bottom of the river. The macabre question unsettles the guests, and they politely excuse themselves. Olivier advises her that indulging in morbid curiosity won't alleviate her grief. In contrast to the others, Lorong stays to comfort Madame, assuring her that the guests are simply paying to witness her suffering. The matriarch finds solace in his words and appreciates his presence. As the evening draws to a close, Madame summons Therese, preventing the lovers from seizing a moment of privacy for themselves. Later, the widow is haunted by a nightmare of Camille, envisioning herself drowning as well. The next day, Therese is on edge, and when Lorong sneaks up on her, she nearly stabs him in fear. She confides that she has trouble sleeping, plagued by nightmares of Camille. Her paramour assures her that once they're married and share the same bed, her nightmares will stop. Desperate, Therese implores they flee at once. However, Lorong asserts that doing so would only lead them to capital punishment. He urges her to be patient, emphasizing the importance of waiting to secure a future where they can be together and the shop. Therese dismisses is the shop, revealing that everything is in Madame's name. Taken aback by the revelation, Lorong suggests another sinister plan. But before they can discuss further, they hear the matriarch approaching. Immediately, the widow pretends to be sobbing, giving Lorong an opportunity to escape. Lorong slips out through a side door, but encounters Suzanne, 
who happens to be watching the tragic scene inside. She attempts to offer comfort and support, but Larong persuades her to leave the grieving alone. On another game night, Inspector Misho remarks on Teresa's deteriorating health and attributes it to her loneliness. Grivet presents marriage to Larong as a solution, saying nothing would respect Camille's memory more than his friend taking his widow. Despite Madame's misgivings, she begins to entertain the idea. Meanwhile, in another room, Therese discreetly confronts Larong about his affair, accusing him of carrying the scent of another woman. Her paramour confesses to his infidelity but assures Therese that the affair is over. Before an argument could erupt, Madame and the other guests enter the room, announcing their decision to marry Larong. Therese, now uncertain about her lover, tries to decline gracefully. However, the painter quickly accepts the offer, leaving her with no choice but to proceed with the marriage. Following the wedding, Madame informs the newlyweds about their inheritance once she passes away. Suzanne comments on the binding power of money, suggesting that money is a more powerful bond than love. That night, Laurent sees the painting of Camille hanging in their bedroom, seemingly watching over them like a specter. Therese's attention is drawn to a scar on Laurent's neck, and when she touches it, he recoils in pain. She inquires about the scar, but Laurent deflects the question. Instead, he remarks that they've dreamt of this moment, but his wife can't enjoy it, haunted by the memories of Camille. Curiosity overwhelms Therese as she wonders about her past husband's death. Laurent recounts the events. Although far from the truth, he describes a gentle demise. It's revealed that the scar on his neck resulted from Camille biting him, serving as a constant reminder of his guilt. Despite their marriage, the couple finds it impossible to find solace in each other's arms. Laurent reminds Therese that it's their wedding night, but she asserts that she married him the moment she stepped into the boat. In contrast to the energizing effect their secret meeting once had, Madame confides in Suzanne that ever since sharing a bed with Laurent, Therese has been plagued by exhaustion and now takes afternoon naps regularly. On a particular day, Madame and Therese pay a visit to Laurent during lunch. As he returns to his duties, the weight of grief over Camille's death, combined with a vision of him, proves too much to bear for Madame. She suffers a stroke, rendering her paralyzed and speechless, as a doctor later confirms to them. Before long, Laurent considers eliminating Madame as well but he's thwarted by the fact that in order for him to access any inheritance, Therese's signature is required. Suzanne's words prove true. Money is a more powerful bond than love in their relationship. Soon, unable to bear the looming presence, Laurent burns Camille's portrait. The couple argue during dinner, and tensions escalate further when Therese is in the midst of bathing Madame. She begins to discuss the day of Camille's death, triggering an aggressive outburst from Laurent. In the chaos, Madame is abandoned in the tub, almost mirroring the tragedy that befell her son. The couple's voices fill the air as they shift blame of who's truly responsible for Camille's demise, all while their mother-in-law slowly sinks deeper into the water. Moments before Madame drowns, Therese carries the distraught woman out of the water. With their secret exposed, Laurent taunts the helpless cripple. After a bout of drinking, Therese visits an abattoir, which inspires her. During a day of dominoes, Grivet makes an effort to engage Madame in the game. However, Suzanne notices that she is attempting to write something, capturing the attention of the group. Mistakenly, they interpret her scribbling as gratitude, much to the relief of Therese and Laurent. Madame's tears of frustration are also misconstrued as tears of joy by the onlookers. On a separate occasion, Madame attempts to use ink, but her unsteady hands cause it to spill onto the floor. Shortly afterward, Therese places the blame for everything on Madame's overbearing nature before storming out, leaving the matriarch the freedom to do as she pleases. After a drunken night out on the town, Therese aggressively rejects Laurent and wakes up the next morning by the river. Elsewhere, Laurent stops by a shop to buy rat poison. Upon Therese's return, she takes it upon herself to carry Madame upstairs. Later, recalling the abattoir, she sharpens one of her knives to a lethal edge. After some time, Suzanne visits the shop and discovers a message left on the floor, revealing that Therese and Laurent are dangerous. Horrified, she hastily departs in search of the authorities. Therese, in turn, comes across the note and pleads for Madame's forgiveness. When the bell signals the arrival of a customer, Laurent insists that his wife face the visitor. Therese descends to meet the person, only to find out it's Olivier, paying a friendly visit. She guides the policeman out, concealing the message in the process. Although tempted to confess, Therese finds herself unable to reveal the truth. Rather than confessing, Therese and Laurent decide to take Madame for a picnic near the river. Unbeknownst to each other, both of them harbor sinister intentions during this outing. In a moment of eerie understanding,
understanding, the couple perceive the intentions of the other and choose to drink Larong's poisoned wine. In the end, Larong keeps his promise of never leaving Therese. They embrace, and Therese, overcome by the poison, finally finds peace in Larong's arms. They seal their fate with a kiss, succumbing to the deadly embrace. In the midst of this tragic scene, Madame Rakan observes with a satisfied gaze, having witnessed retribution for her Camille. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.